No, that's interesting. It used to countdown. It doesn't do countdown anymore. It just records, which is very fine. All right. And we're going to start recording on Big Blue Button 2. So the um, test is done after the study break, not during the study break, because I got messages from people that we don't have uh, um, shuttle buses running around and we can't uh, come to school and so on and so forth. So we're going to do it on March 9th, Tuesday. Uh, that's when your test is going to be. Um, uh, any questions about the test? Amazing. Usually people, somebody wants to ask something, but apparently no one. Oh, honey, go ahead. What's up? You had a question. Uh, I do not have the option of the uh, mock test anymore uh, is it, yeah i uh, close uh, i it goes closed you want me to reopen is it, it possible yeah is it possible to we have that mock test again so oh you want to see sure yeah. sure sure I'll, I'll i'll actually uh i'll uh, i'll open it up and set it let me just confirm that it's going to come up i'm going to create a new window i'm going to do it right now thank you very much no problem op244 anybody prefers to do the the, the test on on a paper Keep going. One, two, three, four people are not responding. I would need everybody's answer. Paul, how about you? Paul Chow? Okay. So, uh, yes, just configuring. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so, so this is the poll. Just letting you know. There you go. We have uh, uh, um, doing it on paper. Uh, seven people said yes, eight said no, and 17%, three other people said we don't care. Therefore, it's going to be on a computer. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just like, uh, I, I missed something with my earphones. I, I supposed to tell no for this question. Okay, good. So then this, this is no then. <laughs> good. <laughs> So it's even more no now. All right. Okay. So it is got, it is on a computer. Um, it doesn't make any difference actually. Um, um, so I am going to make the uh, the mock test and ZAA. I'm doing it right now and also. Oh, there we go. Here I am. All right. So. The mock test would be on mock test, uh, uh, midterm test, demo test, edit test options. So we're going to make the availability display until, um, so it's going to be on 9th. I'm going to leave it open um, March 9th. I'm going to leave it open till Tuesday. Uh, March 7th. So display until submit. And Hania, could you please confirm that you can see the demo test? In just a moment, please. Or anyone else, uh, for all that matters. Anybody who has the subject open, just go to the midterm test, see if you can see the demo test over there. Yes, I saw this. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I can, can see, see that. You know, okay, beautiful. Yes, so I can see as well. Thank you very much. No problem. So it's there. Yeah, all right. So that's that. And uh, what else we need to talk about? That's it. So uh, what I'm going to do over here... Uh, I'm going to bring up the weekly schedule, as we see in here. And I am going to go through all the things that we have done and see if there is anything missing in here. We didn't talk about a couple of things I know that we missed. I'm going to talk about it right away. Then we're going to go through all the concepts that we have for the first half of the semester. And we'll be, we'll be going through it. 
today I am posting workshop number six I have decided to make it uh, do after the study break uh, and it has only a lab it doesn't have DIY because the project kicks in so you don't need it uh, you, you, you have your hands full already so there it doesn't have a DIY it's only lab um, uh, workshop six about is about uh, classes with resources in the you are going to have it so that's that um, so let's uh, let's uh, start with the concepts that I wanted to talk about first of all um, we want to talk about uh, another type of uh, so this is the string that we talked about in class we created rule of three we did some um, type conversion um, uh, let me just uh, but a question uh, is the screen readable or you want it so let me say, you want the fonts getting bigger oh many people are saying yes all right so is it okay now all right good so that's the screen so that's a, that's the, the string that we have and we had the data and we had the length uh, for the for the string we had an is empty we had a set empty is empty returned at bool we had a, a default constructor that uh, by default set the string to uh, to um, null we had a display let me just let me actually bring them up and, and explain and show exactly what they were so kind of uh, have a quick review on what we had and then I'm going to talk about a few things that we did not talk about last time so let me bring these uh, so where do I bring it down so we can it can be visible so I'll bring it over here so that's the display and this is the operator overload for the okay now I can kind of squeeze it to the left so we can see there we go so uh, is empty well, it was telling us if the data is null or not <clears throat> set empty sets the data to null and sets the uh, length to uh, zero um, the regular constructor uh, will make sure that what we are receiving is not null if it's not null it takes its length um, and uh, allocates memory for it and copy the information over there so we know that the display checks to make sure that we are okay and this because it's in an if statement invokes the boolean operator and when we look at take a quick look at the boolean operator we'll see that it simply returns not empty so when if when the the current object is put in a place that a boolean is supposed to be system tries to um, cast it to a boolean and therefore the the uh, the, the cast operator or a, a type conversion operator will be called and is an empty is, is returned um, and if everything's okay, it's going to show it, and at, uh, uh, at the end, it's going to return the OSDR. The read over here is going to read um, any size that comes in, but the limit is to 4096. If you can remove this, so I'm just going to put over here, if you can remove the limit of 4096, there are some bonus marks for you so what you do you uh, put the put all these challenges put it in your github repository and just send it to me tell me that I've done this go on ch on chat and said say I, I've done it and if I see it's there I'm gonna add some bonus marks so all the people who say that we didn't do the workshop on time or stuff like that if you do these things that I'm putting over here you get bonus marks and therefore you can recover out of the uh, marks that you have lost in your uh, in your um, workshops so if you can remove uh, uh, the limit of 4096 so in here it can go up to 4096 obviously if I have something it's going to get deleted and uh, object is going to go to a, to an empty state then it's going to try to get the line up to 4096 and um, then it's going to uh, 
uh, allocate and copy so what I'm gonna do add to this one over here that is a mistake that I didn't do was that I have to check to see if ISDR actually failed or not if ISDR fails it means I got to 496 which means it's at the limit and it's gonna crash so I do not want that to happen so what I will do I'm gonna say if I can do two things either I can uh, check to see if it crashed and say uh, I'm not gonna get it or I can just silently get 496 and ignore the thing but because we want it to make we want to make sure that the user knows that some information is lost I'm gonna actually so if I actually left this one get over here instead of get line it wouldn't have crashed uh, so ISDR not crash but ISDR wouldn't have failed because get will, will not fail but get line will fail so um, I'm gonna leave the get line over here and I'm gonna say uh, uh, so if yeah if I leave the get line over here and it reaches to the point so ISDR will be in a fail mode so we are good so ISDR will be in a fail mode the only thing that I have to do I have to say if ISDR is good do the allocation and copying otherwise don't do it and leave it empty so if it reaches to the thing it it crashes and they know that something is is wrong and uh, um, they're not going to do it so do we understand what happened at line 39 okay so um, I have a no over here so I'm gonna explain when get line reaches to the size C in fails, ISDR fails, iStream fails. So we made the limit of this reading to be to 496, which means if anybody tries to read more than 4096 characters, if I just leave it as is, ISDR is going to fail, and then 496, this allocation and copy will fail because temp is not going to be null terminated, and the data over here, um, so the whole process is going to fail what I will do over here is this I will get the line up to 496 and if that 496 is reached and ISDR fails I know that they went beyond the amount that I have the limit so I'm gonna say if ISDR is successful so essentially I'm saying if not ISDR dot fail these two mean the same if I do it like this or I just write ISDR by itself it's gonna invoke the boolean like like we did for the string so if it's successful it means if it didn't fail then I'll do the copying if not I'm not gonna do any copying which means the object remains empty and uh, when not object is remain empty and I didn't do any allocation in the copy uh, read will go to a uh, invalid uh, sorry the string will go to an invalid empty state and uh, what should we call it? The, uh, the, the the data will be copied. We can actually make it even better. What we can do, we can actually bring this thing up here, so we can do the get line right at the beginning. And if it is successful, then do the rest of this stuff. So, if we do it like this, it means that uh, if get line fails, our object will not change it remains what it was before um, and just ISDR will fail so they can detect afterwards I think this method would be better um, so if they put too much uh, the string will not be overwritten and it will not be deleted and it remains what it had before are we okay with this now all right Ardell be with us please I don't see resp you responding the the, 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 the poll. Okay, so uh, the length returns the length of the string. We want to know how long it is. Um, uh, and uh, let me take the potato out over here. We don't need it. Um, the copy constructor does the standard thing, which means it uh, overwrites the string with what we had before. But because it's a constructor, I have to make sure that everything is null in it, which it is. So I have these two over here so I don't need to worry about it um, it's simply f the two are null and uh, so in here have to make sure uh, 
uh, string is empty before reusing the logic in operator equal okay and I made sure of that by these two things and then it calls the operator equal and the thing is copied how does operator equal work it first does a self copy first self check to see if I'm not copying on myself if it is not a copy then it deletes the current object the left operand and empties it then it checks to see if the data of the other one is a valid one or it can do this or it can say if s so um, I'm gonna just make it better so if s is okay then it's going to do the length and everything and copy everything if if s is empty then uh, it's not gonna bother uh, doing any copying and at the end it returns this stop me if there is anything over here that uh, you don't understand we do the concatenation to do a plus equal between two strings which means we got um, uh, we uh, allocated enough memory to to have the length of left and right which is kind of wrong over here what I need to do is to make sure that if I have anything in the right one so if the right one was is empty this operator equal will fail therefore it's better to here first to see if I have anything at the right side or not so in here I'm gonna say if s which means if s exists so this program that we had it had a bug so if s exists and has something then concatenation is supposed to happen then when we are coming in in here i am using the length that i have now so if it's zero then i'm fine so in here i'm going to say um, so in here i am going to uh, check for what i'm going to say if uh, so that's that this is fine and that uh, it becomes zero if I have any information in here it's going to get copied uh, into the data I do not need to do this anymore because now when I'm here I'm sure that s is good so um, it's going to concatenate uh, the content of that one and we know because the s is in the uh, place that constant character pointer is it's going to be automatically invoked so I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, um, operator of s will be invoked and therefore it's gonna copy it lengths are updated that old data is gone and the new data is set and now I have a plus equal over here so that's how the plus equal happens are we okay with this all right the next thing we want to do is to destruct the destructor the destructor just deletes the data and I don't care about anything else it's just gone everything is good uh, any cast that is to a constant character pointer will return the M data and it's gonna be uh, returning a constant character pointer out any boolean cast will return the status of not being empty which means it will tr return true if it's not empty if they attempt to print it the display is called if they attempt to read it the read is called and I have my string set right over here uh, are we okay down to this point alright the next thing I want to do over here is a binary is a binary uh, uh, plus operator so if I have something like that how do I do it if I have two strings let's bring uh, the main over here if I have so um, I have some testing done over here so this is fine I don't need these these are all tested before so in here I want to be able to have something like string name over here or string name over here that's fine then I want to have a string uh, last name over here okay 
Now what I want to have will be this. If I use the plus equal over here, ladies and gents, if I use the plus equal, and I, let's say I have a string, string full name. To actually get the full name, I have you know that I have to first say full name is set to name. That's the first one. Then I have to say full name plus equal space. Then I have to say full name plus equal Simpson and mission is accomplished. If I go see out full name, see out in here, I'm going to say name, name, and see out last name. And I'm going to put the last name. Oh, not Simpson. In here, I have to say last name. Why did I say Simpson? Okay, then I have to say, what do I say? What do I say? I say C out full name. And now in here, I'm going to have full name printed. So if I do something like this and, and I run it, we'll know that everything's going to go okay, and hopefully, and uh, it's going to actually show the full name without name and first name and last name change at all. So uh, to actually show that nothing is changed, I'm going to do it like this so I know exactly what is where. Okay, running it one more time. I know that name and uh, last name and first last name are untouched, and full name is set, so it is accomplished. But I don't want to do it like this. I want to actually write the code instead of this. So I'm gonna comment all these. I want to be able to say this: full name is set to name plus space plus last name okay if I want to do something like this what is going to happen first of all you see that no uh, <laughs> let's run it and see just for you to show to show you what, what's gonna happen over here oh my god that's, that's gonna crash so badly as you see there is no error message happening over here but let's see what's gonna happen so I'm gonna say see out uh, I'm going to bring the, the C out for full name over here. First of all, you acknowledge, you understand that the plus is not overloaded at all over here. But when you are looking at this, the compiler say, oh, I can figure out what to do with that. And when I run the program, this is going to be the outcome. Look at that. Okay. So what happened? Can anybody explain to me what happened over here that I don't get an error and it compiles and shows me something garbage? Anyone? Can anybody guess? Come on, smart people. Uh, it is an integer, boolean, something like that. So yeah, so either boolean or an integer. So what happens? Who said that? Johnny? Was it you? Yes. Okay. So, 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 yes. So what happens over here is this C, the C language says I have plus and I need to see what can work with plus in here. So when it looks at it, it's name plus a constant character pointer. Therefore, when it reaches over here, it says, I'm going to go and extract so actually find out that boolean is better so it actually returns that thing being not empty so it returns a one out and adds that one to the address of this thing that it has over here and then it's going to cast the other one so what happens essentially is this it's going to get the address of this constant plus two and the equal sign over here will actually get that value that I have no idea where it is. It's actually, it's <laughs> the path of, so you take a look at here. It's actually that C string is actually pointing to the path of the application. 
by just by chance so it comes in here now and it sets the data and everything and gets the length so the length is wow zero now so um yeah anyways it, it's just gonna put some garbage values in there so it, it doesn't mean anything so it didn't work so um it tried it best but the compiler is dumb so it doesn't know what's going on it just sees what plus is good for these things we have to make that change first of all the first thing that happens is so plus happens at from left to right so the very first thing i need to do is to make this work so i need to have a um um what should we call it uh string and a constant character pointer with a plus means something so um, I'm gonna come over here and just do it so I'm gonna say it is supposed to return a string and it's an operator plus and at right side it receives a constant character pointer C string so that's what I'm going to create and it is not supposed to change the content of the current string because it's a uh, it doesn't have any side effects so I'm gonna make this a constant so that's the first thing that I'm going to create um, let's actually okay did it create it Why didn't do it? Give me a second, one more time. Click actions, create. What's going on? I thought it's gonna actually create the definition for it, but it didn't. Am I missing something here? Operator. Nope, so it doesn't do it. Okay. Cool. Something is wrong today. Did it create something in here that I missed? I think there's some kind of a bug in Visual Studio. Give me a second. Let me save this. I'm going to rebuild it. It created it somewhere, but I can't see anything. Did it create it here? No. Um, sorry. I wanted to, to create the thing so I can fill it in oh yeah it created it I missed it it's here sorry okay so it created so in here I'm gonna say return this I just want to see where it is okay so now I'm gonna actually uh, do this okay something's wrong with my visuals is saying visual weird stuff so it says return Oh, and it cannot be a reference because I'm not returning the, uh, the left one. I'm returning something new. That's why it's giving me that, which is fine. So now in here, I'm going to create a string. String. Um, I'm going to say copy, and I'm going to set this one to uh, what I am. Okay. And in here, I'm not going to return this. Okay. And now that I have the copy, I need to add this to the copy that I have over here. I do not have anything assigned for it, but I know that this one is going to get called. So uh, in here, I am going to say so that so it's going to be a copy of the left one. And then so let me bring it over here so we see what we are doing. So so what I have inside is copy of name. So copy of name is going to go over here. Now I have to say copy plus equal uh, C string. So C string will be added to copy and at the end the copy is returned. So now this will return a string that uh, uh, is nameless. But it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, it's a string. So it puts a string at left and I have a string at right. Now I need to actually uh, create uh, the code for that one. So I'm going to go over here and create a string operator plus and in here I'm gonna say a constant 
string reference s and I'm gonna make it a constant so it doesn't change and I'm gonna create the exact same thing over here so so in here instead of a constant character pointer it's gonna create a constant receive a constant string reference s so um, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing over this so this is gonna be a copy of this which means the left one whatever it is and it's gonna say plus equal s and it's gonna return the copy so um, now the two operators are written and see if it's going to actually work for us okay so I'm gonna start it's gonna come over here those are set it comes over here the first plus operator is called with the constant character pointer the copy constructor is called and copy becomes a copy of of name that we had it says error I we, did we do something wrong in here this is Homer the copy did not work let me walk through again and see what did I do wrong okay so run it one more time and go here 11 I come up copy constructor we come to copy constructor the data and length are set in here it's gonna get the copy the right one is Homer if this is not the same deletes the current data sets to empty the length will be set to length of Homer that is 5 and it's copied and this is returned it looks like everything is good so how come it's not showing anyways let's see if it's actually uh, that the intelligence is going bananas or not anyways so uh, now that it's done it's going to uh, build the uh, uh, a copy of the right hand operator in here so the second one is called because it was a C string over here now it creates that temporary instance out of this one and creates that one and uh, it uh, does a plus equal between the two so now copy does a plus equal it comes over here gets the value gets the length of both new data gets copied data will be Homer and concatenates the other one which is a space after deletes the current data sets it and everything and now we have one space added afterwards the second one is now the the, the string that is returned plus the other one the name list that is returned over here it picks up the next one and does the copying for that one and the exact same procedure happens for it and is returned and hopefully the full name is printed over here where is it and we have the full name and now at the end uh, the destructor will be called for all of them and gone there is one thing that I do not like over here I know half of you didn't get what's going on in here it doesn't matter we'll walk through it again but uh, because uh, we did not overload this operator it creates some temporary objects that I do not like so I'm gonna come in the string dot H and create that one too so the plus equal that I have over here I'm gonna create another one over here with the um, with the constant character pointer C string okay and um, it it works the exact same way like the other one that we have in here where is it um, there we go the only difference is that the right one instead of uh, an object is actually uh, a constant character pointer so constant character pointer C string and uh, so in here I'm gonna say if C string is not null get in here and 
in here I'm going to say u dot str len of c string so that's that one so it gets what is the length of the c string and in here is going to be c string and in here is going to be the same thing being called again it's going to be added to that one and deletes and everything is good so what I did I just added uh, the plus equal for the for the constant character pointer so uh, the t temporary one is not called anyways so walking through this one more time uh, let me just uh, run it make sure it runs okay this is fine now <clears throat> I'm gonna do it step by step so first we're gonna do this and see what happens okay uh, so just the space over here and and we'll see what happens then I'm gonna add the last thing um, down to this point how many people actually got what I did when I went through it that quickly how many people actually got what I did can I just it's just curiosity I I didn't ex I don't expect that you actually got it completely but uh, let me know <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as I s suspected, uh, and many people are not even responding. Yusuf, Yuri, Oyan, Nevlin, Mahdi, you there? Okay. So, let's start. So the very first thing that I want to do is an operator plus equal over here between, uh, so I want to be able to have name and uh, a constant character pointer create a string have a string and a constant character pointer create a string that contains both of them but doesn't change name to do that I have to overload the plus operator between the two in a way that in a way that it doesn't change the owner which is the name in this case and it creates a copy out of the two and returns it to do something like this I need to create a temporary string and build what I have in there and return that one instead when this is returned then the outcome of these two will be a nameless string that is returned so um, just, let me just go through it one time and as we are going through it we'll understand how it works so in here I have a plus name at life left and uh, constant character pointer at right obviously the the, 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 the operator that's gonna get, be called is the operator that belongs to string and it's plus which is this one by nature I do not want to have a side effect because plus doesn't have a side effect therefore I make it constant to make sure I'm not gonna make that mistake then to accomplish this I will create a temporary string equivalent to what I have in my object so this copy becomes a copy of name um, and uh, sadly there is a bug in Visual Studio that's why it's jumping to return first where it's not supposed to um, my apologies on that it's not uh, our fault it's just uh, the um, the tracing of Visual Studio has a, has a bug and it doesn't work it's supposed to actually copy it and the copy is perfectly legit so now after doing this this copy of mine will have a plus equal with the C string that we have already designed because that is set over here but I have that code I can actually do that to create a, a temporary thing for myself in here it's, there's no problem with that so that's what I'm gonna do so this temporary object of mine that is a copy of name will have the string attached to it now I will return that one and what returns will replace this plus operator which is a copy of what I have in here and therefore now at left side I have full name at right side I have this copy and the assignment operator in the middle then the assignment operator will be called 
so this reference of s is actually reference of that temporary nameless that i have so now this s of mine whatever it has over there i don't know why is it doing this oh it actually here shows that it's homer okay good it's a homer with the space at the end so we have to we actually look at this we'll see that it is actually homer with the space at the end so it comes over here and it overwrites the value of the left full name with that one and therefore full name will be homer with a space as you see okay now because the left side returns a string i can actually have another plus and continue using that nameless object for the full for uh, and add the last name to it so essentially the first step is this this is going to get resolved creating a string and that string with another will do another uh, concatenation between the two and now uh, the string is going to work um, um, like a charm uh, are we okay with this just to see the number of cops just for for so in here I have a total of three classes therefore if we look at this we would think that okay uh, what I have over here is three classes therefore three classes are created and gone but if you actually activate the debugging in here so if you actually go to debug and in this debug I actually added a tester class I'll, I'll explain later I um, activate the debugging and see the number of copy constructors and copy assignments happening you will see that is one two three and then five of them are being killed so uh, I think copy constructor is uh, doesn't have a message in it let me add that one too where is the copy constructor yeah copy constructor doesn't have a message so I'm gonna just do it like that so in here I'm gonna say copying copying a string out of in here I'm gonna say s s and nothing so now if I run it I can see the outcomes better oh did it crash yeah it crashed it's because these two are not the same type so in here I'm gonna say copying a string out of if s is that one return s and in here uh, so if it is let me just take this out and make it simple I'm going to say if s c log s and else c log nothing or empty string in this case are we okay I think this is gonna work now one more time there we go uh, you understand what happened because uh, by default when you are using the conditional operator the type of the both side of true or false should be the same it wasn't the same that's why it crashed but anyway so this is what happens as you see I have this is the three that I have this is the three that is dying and these are the two copying that should happen to that to to make this thing possible so for this to happen two copies have to get created and die so first the copy of Homer then the copy of Homer and, uh, and space and then it kills both of them and continues with the rest of the operation so let me uh, go back and remove the debug are we okay down to this point all right all right so that's that 
So this is a, a review of uh, uh, like the, the, ex the of uh, creating uh, um, uh, operators for uh, uh, binary operators. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to create a binary operator that we have to have it as a helper. To do something like that, um, I'm going to show you this example. So um, in here, I'm going to so in here I'm going to say um, a uh, binary member with no side effect dot cpp and the other one that we are going to test in here is going to be a binary operator with no side effect that cannot be a member so in here I'm not going to have the name and I and, and I want to and I have a full name and in here I want to write something like this. Okay, to have something like this, I have a C string at left, and I have a string at right. This is not defined, of course, when I'm doing something like this, because already there is a plus over here the comp the compiler will try to cast this to a string and take over whatever is supposed to be done but I'm gonna um, write it anyway so I can handle it myself to do something like this I need to have a C string at left and a plus at right because plus cannot be a member of a primitive operator this has to be a helper therefore the signature for it will be string obviously it is not a reference because it's outcome of the combination of two separate things with no side effects so it's operator plus at left side I have constant character pointer C string and at right side I have a constant character uh, constant string reference of S which is right operand yes Navlin you had a question uh, and just a small question like in the previous uh, time where you logged C log that didn't work and crashed mm -hmm. and why because we've already overloaded the operator C like no 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 see see this is uh, the conditional operator is a low level operator which means when you have the conditional operator let me find the place that I put that comment in in here so the conditional operator works like this when you are writing a conditional operator like this so you have a condition and you have a question then you have a value you have a quest you have a thing and you have value two. correct yeah Cor these two must have identical types no overloads nothing both integers both constant character pointers because it's a very low level thing happening Got it? Okay. So in yeah, here, you Thank must you. have a constant character pointer. This must be a constant character. If it's an unsigned integer, this has to be an unsigned integer. Okay? Right. Uh, so just to make sure, so if you made a helper, like if you made a member cast operator to, uh, over, like to cast it to uh, We did that already. We have string. It. So if you cast it to string, it would work, right? No, it didn't work. Because one is... A, one is a literal value, the other one is a constant character point. But explicitly, if you explicitly cast it to a string, it should have worked. Probably. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm not going to even test it. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, test it and see what happens. All right. So, quite frankly, uh, who, who asked that question? Who explained take, uh, that if we had it explicitly? Who, who was it? It's, it was me, okay. Nikolai. Oh, so, Nikolai, um, stuff like this, okay, that are so low level that you have to go and understand how the compiler works, it's better not to do it because later on it's going to shoot you in the foot when a new version of C comes up. Mm, okay. You have to, it's better to write it in a way that it works in any case. Yeah. Okay. okay. It, it's main, more maintainable, let's put it that way. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So, uh, operator plus operator. So I want to mm -hmm. do this. Uh, so, so, so uh, for example, uh, as you see, uh, give me a second, man. Uh, man, okay. man, Mandersay, Mandersay, Mandy, Mandy. 
<laughs> Mandy, okay, Mandy. Okay, so um, uh, as you see over here, I did not need to overload this one because compiler would have casted it and do it. But I'll do it not to uh, be in a case that I have to assume what the compiler is supposed to do for me. Okay, that's why I'm doing it. So uh, um, I have somebody over here that requests uh, an attention. So to have a break, I'm introducing Coco. Hello, everyone. He wants, she wants uh, uh, um, attention over here and, and kind of distracting me. So I'm just going to do like this. Okay, attention is done. Now go. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's continue. All right. Uh, what do we have? Uh, yeah. So let's actually overload this. So uh, let's create the operator. It created it over here somewhere. Let's find it. Uh, I'm going to say go to definition. All right. So, <clears throat> oh, actually, it wrote half of the code for me. Uh, so uh, in here, I have a return string over here that says you have to return actually an object of type string. It's actually telling you. And I'm going to do that. So in here, I'm going to say string result. And I'm going to create this out of C string because I know I have that constructor. So I'm going to do what the constructor did over there, what the, uh, 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 the automatic cast of the compiler will do. And then in here, I'm going to say, uh, uh, now that the result is set over here, I'm going to say uh, result plus equal uh, right, uh, right hand operator. And I'm going to return the result. And compile and run the program. And you'll see it's going to work like a charm. Oh, it didn't. What happened? I think I didn't print it, did I? <laughs> OK, C out. Where is the C out full name thingy that I had? Let me just copy it from there in here. So if I run it, you'll see that it works and actually shows Homer Simpson like that. But the, the professional way of writing this uh, is this. Do you remember that I told you never call a constructor? So, Mandy, I actually mentioned that. I said never call a constructor. OK, I actually mentioned that constructors are not functions and I screamed at my hands in here and said, do not call a constructor because it's not a function. And then we explained that when you call a constructor, what seems to be a function call, it's not calling a function. It creates a temporary nameless uh, object. So instead of doing this, what I can do is this. I can say string C string. So this creates a temporary nameless string. Then I'm going to say to this temporary nameless string, add the right hand operator. Now I have a temporary nameless. That right hand operator was added to it. Now I'm going to say return it. So this is the good case of pretending that you're calling a constructor, but you are not. What you're doing over here, you are creating a nameless string and plus equaling it to the right-hand operator and returning it. So this, so this is exactly this one. The difference is that you are not going to create an extra object. You just simply create the object nam nameless and you return the nameless using here. And therefore, an, an extra object is not going to get created because by uh, rule, as we mentioned, a nameless object is never copied. So the result is not going to get copied in here and sent out. And, and so you save uh, a little bit of time in here. And for all the other things that I have done, like for example in here that I actually did a copy like this, the best way of doing it was to do the exact same way. So all these things that I have written, the best way was to actually 
return string out of this plus equal s and in here the same but professor in like both the cases the objects are created like here start this one more time in here like so you like are creating both the an cases, extra the first case so, copies so one more time you were saying in a previous we created an object copy in the second one we also created a new string in which we are adding s yeah but the difference is that in here you have a local object correct yeah and that local object will be right over here we have it so you have a local object so a string is created that copy is supposed to be returned out anything passed by value will be copied correct so the yeah. second object will get created in here and then your copy will die and that nameless goes out so you have one extra object created why when I can just create a nameless because I know nameless objects are never copied so it creates a nameless object adds to it and returns that one out it's already nameless why create another nameless out of it it saves time you follow okay yeah thank okay. you okay all right so one less object uh, try it do it like this and then activate the debugging thingy you'll see you're going to have less number of objects created so the best way to do it is the same as this one so in here uh, uh, i'm going to do the same thing i want to say return a string out of this that is plus equal to c string I'm just saving time that's all I'm doing the results outcome is identical absolutely no difference the only difference is that the code is faster now are we all okay with this all right yeah sir excuse me so can I just ask one thing go um, ahead buddy so why does uh, the, um, the last um, operator have to be a helper outside why it has to be a helper outside? Yeah, can you just re-explain that part? Okay, please? Too, very easy. Stay with me. Don't go. Okay. So okay. when I have something like this, um, say last name plus equal. In here, I'm gonna say J. Okay. So I'm adding J to Simpson. Okay. I make the plus equal a member of last name, correct? Because last name at left side is an object. Do we understand this? Yeah. Okay. Now in here, you have Homer plus last name. How can you make plus member of a constant character pointer? Can you? No, you can't. Hence, you have to make it a helper. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is all done. Now we're going to go to the next thing. What if somebody wants to say, wants to do something like this, for example? Let's say I have Simpson over here and I'm printing this out. So when I'm actually printing this out, I'll see that it's lowercase s. I want to make it uppercase. So I want to actually do this. I want to say last name. And I do this. And I'm going to put over here 0. And I'm going to say is equal to s. How can I do that? How can I make my string act like a character array 2? I would like that to happen. To do something like this, you need to overload the index operator, which means in here, I have to actually mention something like this. I have to say character reference. I want to return a reference of a character inside the array of the string. So I'm going to say character reference. And in here, I'm going to say operator 
and I'm going to say index. So that's operator index being overloaded. And in here, I'm going to receive an index. So index usually is an unsigned. You can return it, pass anything to here. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to return, uh, oh, since we know what size T is, I'm going to return size T. Size T. And in here, I'm going to say index. So, <clears throat> and I'm not going to make it constant because I want them to be able to change it. So what can I do? How can I actually do something like this? So in here, uh, I'm going to uh, first let's create it. So to, when I create it, this is what I'm going to get. So uh, this is essentially what it is. Where did I put it? Here we go. So in here, I'm going to say, okay, I need to return the index of the first element if I if I have one. So what I need to do in here is to simply say return uh, m data index. If I do something like this, what's going to happen when they say zero over here? It comes over here. It it comes to this operator index operator and returns the index out. So if I actually go back over here, if I actually uh, uh, walk through this, you will see that because I'm saying index zero, it comes over here, returns the reference of m data zero because this is zero. So the whole operator will become a new name for m data zero because that's a reference and therefore that will be set to s and now i have uh sorry now i have uh, <laughs> there we go now i have the last name printed as capital s so to actually uh gain access to the internals of any type of collection, you can uh, overload the index. Uh, do we understand this? And the good thing is that now I can actually make this thing not to crash. Obviously, if full name over here is set, if I actually do it like this, full name zero is set to X. If I do something like this, what's going to happen? It's going to crash. Why? Because when it comes to the first one, it's fine. It has data. But it comes to the second one, it tries to get this index of M data, but M data is null. So I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't actually do it if this thing is empty. The problem is that if I do something like this, what should I return? because reference of something should return. How can I actually fix this problem? My design says that the empty state of my string is an empty state where m data is null. So I have cases that string has nothing to return. If that's the case, I need to create some junk and return that one. So what I need to do over here, later on we'll, we'll find out that when we actually get to uh, exception handling in OP345, in these type of scenarios, you can return an extension uh, exception. But if something like this happens and this is not right, I can actually fix it. How do I fix it? I'm going to say over here, um, in this string for example, I'm going to create character and I'm going to call it junk. So that's just the single character that I have in a string, and it's a junk. If somebody's careless enough not to check to see if the string is not empty before they actually want to access it, I'm going to return them the junk. So in here, I'm going to say, and this is one of the places that um, it's very challenging to have only one return statement, uh, and uh, we're going to come to it in a second. So what can I do? In here, I'm going to say, uh, first I'm going to write it with two return statements and then I'm going to fix it. So in here I'm going to say if this is good, which means if I am in a good state, return that one. Otherwise, return 
and junk. So now my operator sets the value that it has to x but it's just the junk being overwritten and it has absolutely no effect to my string and it's the fault of the user that is actually trying to set something in here. Do we understand this? Shouldn't so, we check if index is uh, more than the length? We can do that. We'll do that. That's the next step, Nikolai. Okay. okay, that's actually very simple. You know, how do I do that? Take a look. In here, I'm going to say, if this is okay, it means I have something. Just return index mod and length. So if index is less than the length, so let's say the length is 5. If index is 0, 0 mod 5 is 0. If it's 3, 3 mod 5 is 3. If it's 4, 4 mod 5 is 4. As soon as it becomes 5, 5 mod 5 becomes 0. Therefore, it loops back. So if they exceed the size, they're just going to loop back in their own data and nothing's going to happen. Now, do we understand that? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a kind of a smart way to go around it. So uh, now if I run the program, we will see that that X thing is not going to crash, nothing's going to happen, and the Homer Sim is going to work properly, and that zero is nothing. Another way of doing it properly is that when we have an index and it sets, and the index is going beyond the size that we have, we just create the size for it. It's dynamic, right? So instead of doing a junk thingy like this, what I'm going to do is this. Just take a look. I'm going to say, if I'm in a good position, actually, I'm not, yeah, if I'm in a good position, uh, do this, otherwise, do that, okay? <laughs> so, I'm going to remove that junk thingy from there, I don't need it anymore, okay? And in here, in any case, I'm going to say return mdata index. So, I am going to do this, but let's see what I'm going to, what I can do. So, first of all, if I don't have anything in here, and the index is what I have, I have to see how many spaces I have to add to this one, and I will do it. So in here, I'm going to say for size t, i set to 0, i less than index, and less than or equal to index, actually, and i plus plus, I'm going to say this plus equal, say, space. So what happens is that if they send me 10, 10 times I'm going to add space to myself, and then I'm going to return the index. I made it bigger. And in here, if the index is greater than length, so actually, you know what? I can actually do even easier than that. So I don't even need to check the to see if it's valid or not. I'm going to say if index, let's put it like this, if index is greater than or equal to m length, so I want to see if it's going to work or not. I'm just coming up with an idea, people. I'm, I'm just like you. Don't think that, it, that uh, I've done this this way or not. One of the good things that I do is that I don't rehearse it and make it something that it's already there. I just do it on the fly. So if something goes wrong, it's going to go wrong for all of us. But I'm saying over here, if in, because my default of the system that I have over here is that my length becomes zero if there is nothing in there. And whenever it gets, uh, when there is nothing in there, it's uh, it, it, and length is zero. So I have that thing in here. So if I'm saying if I, if index is greater or equal to zero, it means I have to actually start allocating stuff. So in here, I'm going to say if that's the case, I'm going to say while 
m length is less than or equal to index then this plus equal space do you think this is work this is going to work so when they are giving me an index i'll check the index if the index is greater than or equal to length i'm going to keep adding to length until i get to the index then i'm going to give it this so if they give me an index that is bigger let's see if it's going to work do you understand what i'm what i'm, what I'm trying to do <laughs> navling you said no and paul you said no too and uh, uh, Adamora you said no to. Some of you speak, so tell me what is wrong with what I, Oh, many people are saying no. <laughs> um, uh, wow, half of you are saying so. One of you start. Tell me, tell me what's going on. When you said no, what do you mean? Like, what is wrong with? So let's put it this way. Let me just put it this way, okay? <clears throat> Um, one of you who said no, I want you to activate your microphone and talk to me. Please do so. So I can. Uh, have a I said actually yes, but I see that like while I'm length lower equals to index. So is it. So, so uh, let's, let's go through it. Let's go through it together. Okay. I'm going to give an example over here for it. Okay. And together we do it. I want somebody to talk to so I can actually go through it and explain. Are we okay with this? Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. So in here, I'm going to say string. Let's say S uh, and it's set to ABC. Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. What is the last valid index in here? A two. Actually. Two. Perfect. Yes. What is the length in here? Uh, three. three. Correct. So if somebody says S3, it means my string is not long enough. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so in here, I'm going to say uh, S3 set to D. Actually, I don't have an assignment for a character, but I'm... Oh, actually, no, I do. So in here, I'm going to say uh, D. Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? To make this possible i have to keep adding to the length of this one so d can fit correct yes so let's walk through and see if it's going to work so i'm going to say c out s uh, and then l and obviously i'm going to put those things beside it uh, so in here i'm going to do like this to make sure that i am in the length okay so So it comes in, and now the index is 3, the length is 3, which means it's not fine, correct? So length should grow, correct? Yes. And length should be 1 more than index, because when index is 2, it means length is 3, correct? Mm -hmm. So in here I'm coming, is length less than or equal to index? Yes. So it's going to add 1 space to itself. So ABC becomes ABC space. So when we come in here, it comes in here because that's uh, a space. It's going to add one to it, resizes itself, and now it's ABC space. And the length is 4. Is 4 less than or equal to index? No. Um, yeah. No. So now index 3 actually means something. So, you follow what happened now? Yes. So, other people, do you fo did you follow what happened? All right. So, and then we're going to test something else after this. Okay. So, now, if I actually walk through this, you will see that it actually prints A, B, C, D. Not only that, I can actually do this. Take a look. So, in here, I can say... 
for example, S5 is equal to D. If I do something like this, what's going to happen? Let's try. Now it comes in here, index is 5, greater than length that is 3. It comes over here, length is 3, it adds one space. Now length is 4, it's still less, it adds one space. The length is 5, it's still less than or equal, adds one more. Now length is 6, index is 5, we are good. It comes out, returns the index, sets that one to S, and what we're going to have will be ABC space space T. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> Perfect. So that's what we have done in here. And quite frankly, I have never done this implementation in 23 years of overloading this. So this is the first time, that's our first time for everything, I guess. All right. But this, ladies and gentlemen, have a problem. What is the problem? The problem is this. What if I have something like this? Look at the function in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to create the problem, then we're going to solve it. So in here, let's say I have void PRN character, and the PRN character of mine receives a constant string reference S, and it says um, uh, size T index. So I want to print the character index inside the string s. If I want to do that, how can this happen? Take a look. In here, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, c out s index and print it out, right? There is a problem with this. Why is it not showing me a problem? It should show a problem to me. It's interesting that it's not showing a problem. Huh. Let's look at it. It should actually give me a compilation error now. What the devil just happened? Okay, let's try it. So in here, um, let me just remove this. And I'm going to make this um, uh, index overload. So, uh, B index overload cpp so i'm going to bring this back <sighs> this should fail this should not work i'm surprised this actually what the oh because i didn't call it so in here i'm going to say prn care and I'm going to say S, and I'm going to say 5. So I'm going to say print the fifth character. That's what I'm doing. So let's run it now. This should fail. I'm surprised that it's not. So that's that one. How is it possible? Oh, you <laughs> oh. Okay, so see what happened. Because we have overloaded all these things, <laughs> because we have overloaded, overloaded for all things, so the reason I'm saying that it, sh it should not work, this is the case. Let me show you what happened. I, the the, the uh, overload for the index that I have done, where is it? The overload for the index that I have done in here is not a constant one. Hold on, hold on for a second, hold on for a second. Yeah, the overload for the, for the, for the, index operator is not a constant one. It can change the current object. Because of that, I thought if I pass PRN in here and I access the index operator, this is not going to work because the operator index is not constant. It's going to fail. It is going to fail, but it's, it, 
instead of a compile time error, it became a runtime error. Just to show you what it means, take a look. I'm going to remove this uh, a constant character thingy that I have done over here. Constant character pointer. I'm going to comment it, and I'm going to comment this one too. Where is that thing? Constant character pointer. Overload that I have done. So let's comment that one too. And I'm going to recompile, see if it's going to come up with something or not. So I'm going to recompile. And now it's going to give me an error. And the error is going to be, hey, what are you... So, oh, in here it's actually using it. Shoot, it's using it in 50 different places. Um, in here I'm going to say dot and that. Uh, not to have that one. Let's do it again. No. Yeah, so now take a look. Now it's telling me, hey, now this is not a runtime error. It's a it's a it's a compile time error. It's telling me you are trying to access the the index operator, but your index operator over here is changing its owner. It's not a constant one. Therefore, I can't call it, and that becomes an error. Do we understand this? <laughs> In previous case, uh, uh, Nilan, uh, sorry, uh, Nevlin or uh, or Shin Yu or Harley, tell me what's wrong. What you didn't understand? What what we didn't understand? Like, what uh, what are you saying? Like the constant thing. So in here, I'm saying S is constant, correct? Yeah. Okay. If S is constant, it is not supposed to change in this function, correct? Yes. But this operator can change it because it's not constant, correct? Yeah. That's why the compiler will give you a compiler. Okay, got it. Okay. What so do you Navlin, do you know why it doesn't give you an error if I if I uncheck this one? Why, when I remove this one and have uh, the the operator actually uncommented, if I can find it, there you go. Why now I don't get an error and it compiles and runs perfectly? When I do that, why does it why doesn't it giving me give me an error? Do you know that? Because. Because we have an operator overlap that converts uh, to the constant character, the index. Exactly. So what happens, it says you have an index and you I need something over here to be used an index. If it's a pointer, it can be used like an array. What happened? Can you convert this to a pointer? Yes. Where is that pointer? It's right over here, the constant character pointer. So it's going to actually use it. And it's going to crash on me because there is no fifth element after that. So when it comes over here, actually it wants to compile it. Actually, it, it didn't fail, but it probably is going to print some garbage somewhere. It printed two or something. <laughs> I don't know. So it printed some garbage from some place in memory. So that doesn't work. I, I need to I need to tell it hey I do not want to uh, I don't want you to do your own thing I want you to do mine so you can re overload the operator again but this time what you can do is to make it a constant one so an overload can actually be for constants too. So I'm saying create an operator overload for a constant one and in here I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to actually have the same implementation that I had for the previous one which means in here I'm not going to resize anything. I'm going to have const and I'm going to have it over here const too and I have the exact same solution that I had for the other one which means my junk so in here I'm gonna say character m junk and in here I'm gonna write the exact same code for it so I'm gonna say if uh, this is okay return uh, index uh, sorry return m data index mod 
m length. or return or else return m junk and now because i have done that it's going to keep going on itself so when i say five five mod uh, uh length that is three becomes two so it puts the index two instead so when i actually run this now when i when i when i recompile and run it now it actually has a solution for it it knows there is a match over here it goes to that match which is my constant one and because everything is good it's gonna do five mod oh actually i'll put it the other way it should be mm, no five mod five mod three that's correct five mod three and it's gonna return uh the c so no matter what they put it's gonna stay within the size and everything's fine and dandy uh, and if even it's and even if it's an empty one, so if I see over uh, right over here string empty, and I'm gonna print the empty one over here. Professor. Yes. Like if we are uh, putting passing five as an argument, so how C is being printed? Okay, five mod three. What is the outcome of, of that? Uh, first, let's go math. The remainder of a division, can it be bigger than the number? No. No, correct? So mod is like that. When you say 5 mod 3, it means what is the remainder of 5 by 3? It is what? 2, correct? So it's always less than 2. It can never be more than 2. If the index is less than length index will be the, the answer so if it's one one mod three is one if it's two two mod three is one as soon as it reaches to length three mod three becomes zero so the outcome of this value is always less than the length therefore it's safe do we understand that yeah all right but it's going to be a bit random isn't it pardon me uh, index mod length is gonna return something random yeah well, we don't care if they don't care yeah. if they don't care to check the length before the thing let it crash on them my program yeah. won't crash it's gonna have bug for them yeah, okay. all right so now if i run it with the empty one so the first one's gonna print the the c but with the empty one when it comes over here obviously because it's not that one it returns the junk which is some uh empty thingy whatever it is now the problem is two return statements in here. And Fardad, my teacher, doesn't like two return statements in a function. It says one return statement in a function you're allowed to use only. How can I return two different references based on an if statement knowing that a reference is not something you can assign? Okay? What I do is my knowledge of pointer. So instead of writing it like this, I'm going to write the code like this with only one return statement. How do I do it? I'm going to say uh, character pointer. And in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, return. And it's going to be equal to address of m junk. So I'm going to hold the address of junk in that character. Let's make it const. Okay, so that's that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if this is good, put the address of mData in return. So ret will hold the address one of one of these two based on being right or not. How do I return the reference when I have the address? Return reference of ret. Problem is solved. I have only one return statement and it works the exact same way. Are we okay? All right. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we leave over here 
So this is all the things that we need to do about references, pointers, and all the good stuff. Um, and at the end, I'm going to actually give you a challenge to solve. And you do that. Um, and I'm going to uh, give you extra marks. So if you have lost from, um, workshops and stuff like that, you can actually do this. Some people say, if we lose mark here or there, can you give us something to do to gain, to uh, get the mark back? This is your chance. Okay, before doing that, let's talk about construct the, the the stages of construction so far we understood that we have two states of construction one state of construction is within your constructor so when you have a constructor inside your constructor things are getting created so we said that as soon as something gets created the very first thing that happens is a constructor that is being called by default and that constructor is where you set up your object are we okay with this? All right. Now, there is another thing you can do. So, with the second stage that we had before, like the stage that we have even before a constructor, we said that stage is inside the header file. So, when you are in a header file and when you're in a header file and you have your why this string is here is this the one that I'm yeah so we said that the other stage of uh, uh, initialization is when you initialize inside the class and we said these initializations happen even before the constructor is called so in my main in here um, I'll bring the main over here uh, actually it's fine right over here let it be so this one I'm gonna say uh, B index overload const dot cpp so that's constant instant overload we have that's that one let's bring this up so this one is the stages of uh, uh, of creation so let's put it like this now I want to see what happens in here I'm gonna say C out s okay so when this is happening as you see obviously assignment at the moment of creation is constructor so when it comes over here this constructor is called but we know before it wants to come and do all these stuff before the constructor actually does anything it goes in here and these two initializations happen and as you see first this happened then that happened then we come out are we okay with this? We have another stage and for that stage uh, I created a test object to show it to you. So what I will do in here just to demonstrate how this happens, I'm gonna have a test object brought in. There is a place that I, Fardat Solimanlu, not the not the uh, C++ textbook call it initialization area okay that initialization area is here take a look this place between the close curly bracket of a constructor and open curly bracket of the body of the constructor so if I bring my copy constructor over here close to this one so I'm going to put the copy constructor right before this and let's close these up so they don't bug us okay so and in here this is going to be the place you see so this place these places are places that you can initialize any properties that you have in your in your class for example in here if I did not have zero over here I could have brought those things in here I could have put a column at say M data and put the curly bracket in front of it and put a value in there I could put zero over there null PTR or just leave it empty or just write M length in here do it like this all right and the same thing over here so 
So having them in the initialization area for us is the exact same thing as having them over here. But which one happens first? So if I actually put it over here, and, and, and remember, in the initialization area where you are initializing the members of the class over here, you have to make sure that these members of the class are put in the same order. So you cannot put M length first and M data after. So in here, I'm going to say the same order of the attributes in class. So you cannot put M length first and then M data. Having them like this will work the exact same way, but for different constructors, you can have different settings set. Do we understand this? Now, let's take a look at it and see which one is happening first. So, in here I'm going to say M length and I'm going to set that one to 100. And then initialize it to null over here. So I have two right now. One over here, one over here. Let's see which one actually beats it. So if I actually run it, oh that's in a if I actually run it, as you see, it comes to the constructor as it's supposed to, right in here. And as soon as it happens, let's see what's the length. The length is zero, which means the hundred happened first, then the zero happened, which means the stage of initialization sequence is this. That hundred is gone that I put over there because it happened first and this one happened last. So number one, so I'm going to remove it over here and I'm going to remove this one over here for now. This happens first. this happens second and constructor happens third do we understand this the amazing thing now I want you to listen carefully the amazing thing about the initialization area is that you can actually get values from the arguments and initialize the values to those if you want to. And these are very, very, very handy. Do we understand this? Yeah, but you cannot initialize here anything from the constructor. So if any argument is passed to the constructor, you cannot put it in here. But if you want to initialize a value, not set, initialize a value, you can actually do it in this place. Are we okay down to this point? All right. That's... Uh, all I wanted to say, so these are the things that was missing, and uh, it brings us to the to the um, uh, a challenge that I want to give. Uh, everybody's okay down to this point. Everybody's okay. All right. So I'm going to leave it as is, and it runs perfectly. It should be okay. Nothing's wrong with it. And this is the challenge. So here, I'm going to say over here, ah, I can put the challenge over here. So this I want to be ch the challenge. I want you to be able to 
create this for me. No, um, using your knowledge, using your knowledge of pointers, references, references and operator overloading create a class that can do something like this with this string so when I do when I when I write this the output B the output B So essentially, when you write boxed beside a string that you created, it puts the string between a box, between two, two square brackets. So I can just print a string, but if I want the string to be between two square brackets, I write boxed over here, and what I have over here will be printed as a boxed string. Do you understand what the uh, what the uh, uh, challenge is? All right. So in here, I'm going to say create a boxed manipulator object that can put a string in a box as follows so if I write over here of stream file b.txt I should be able to do this too file boxed s and l b.txt will hold abc are we okay with this all right let's see what you can do I want your code so if I have that code and I can if I include that one with my string.header file I'm going to have oh and something else now nah, references external global variables <laughs> using your knowledge of pointers references external global variables and operator overloading I want you to do something like this so when I include so if I include boxed dot H, I can have the following. All right. This is an amazing, like you do this, if you can actually do this, you will have perfect understanding of what pointers are what references are, what external variables are, and what operator overloading is. You do that, you're my hero. Okay, any questions? Yes, Mandy. Yeah, at the start of lecture, you said something um, like uh, there was some value to exceed, or some limit to exceed, and you gave bonus marks, but what was it about? I didn't follow. Oh, at the beginning, before this one? Yeah, beginning of lecture. It was, it was somewhere, I don't remember. It was somewhere in the uh, in the files over here. I wrote something. I wrote I wrote a challenge, didn't I? Anybody remembers what was the challenge, people? 
I get remove you. like uh, this four thousand. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, so the challenge was actually. Is, oh yeah, there you go. Here's, if you remove, so I'm gonna say challenge. This is this challenge. If this challenge, okay, if this challenge gets you ten marks, this one will get you a hundred. Okay, just to compare between the two. Uh, Navlin, you have a question. Navlin, you're with me? Navlin, you who? No? Johnny, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I want to ask the, the operator plus side. Uh, I remember that uh, you can promote the comparator, promote the, 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 the constant character string by itself. So uh, should we just uh, use one helper function that accept two string or we should do this like it's your way? To, it's, it's better not let compiler do promotions and stuff because some it's, okay. it's you don't know what's going to happen in five casts further. Okay. Always the things that compiler does by default, you do it yourself, not in a test and stuff. Okay, if you're in a test, you want to do something quickly? No, but in a, as an advice, when you are creating an application and your application is supposed to work everywhere, don't leave anything to default. Got it? Do it okay. yourself, always. Okay, sure, okay. thanks. Mahdi? Uh, Navlin says uh, her microphone is not working. Can you uh, read the chat? Oh, okay. She's writing okay. I am reading. Okay. I am reading. It's a file. B.TX is a file on the hard drive, which means your box should work with O stream, not only C out. So it should work for all of them. Good. Oh, okay. That was a short question. Anyone else? Are we good? Uh, when is it due? Ah, at the end of study break. Okay. All right. And if you've done it yourself, if you have done it, please don't reveal it to anyone else. Um, uh, do it, give it to me so pe different people can get a mark. If I see t t three different solutions with the same mark, I'm not going to consider it as cheating, but I'm not going to give mark to any of them. So if I get three identical solutions, no one gets a mark. And believe me, it is impossible to find the same solution. This is identical. I'll guarantee that. Okay? Come up with your own solution, you're fine. Uh, should we email it to you? No, you put it in your repository, then you send a private message on Microsoft Teams. Hey, Farda, I did it. It's my, in my repository. I'll go take a look at it. Okay, thank you. All right. Everything happens on GitHub. Everything, people. No email, no copy and paste, please. Are you all good? Any questions? One. Any questions? Two. I yeah, I have one question. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, nailed it. Uh, okay, so uh, first of all, uh, about this uh, second task about create box manipulator, mm -hmm. uh, how much it cost? Uh, I'm just three dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> I mean, in mark. I don't know. I have to take a look at your marks. I'm gonna give you some mark. I cannot put a price on it. It's, okay, it's good. It's gonna be juicy. Let's put it that way. Okay, I understand. Thank and you got to be my favorite student, and you got to be tutoring next semester for IPC one four four. And you got to be in Hall of Fame, and I'm gonna publish your name in the mag. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking. I, in, in someone sells dreams, uh, I would say. Oh sure. <laughs> it's okay, like lottery. You know what I mean? You... Buy my lottery ticket. You're gonna build. You know, you're gonna win a million dollars. But it's good for you if you do that. It's good practice. If you have an extra time and you need some marks, do it. If you don't need any marks. And you know how to do it, you don't need to bother. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's due the end of like uh, the study. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 
fair time for everybody because I'm going to mention this to the other class tomorrow. So to, just to be fair for, to everybody, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Any question one? Any question two? Sold. Thank you. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day, everyone. Thank you, everybody. You too. Thank you, sir.